The extra horses, extra uh, uh, mules, and uh, they, had, they brought mules to make, uh, they brought donkeys to produce more mules. And so they had to be corralled and, and kept with the group marching. And that was one of the jobs of these neophytes. It took 52 days from, from Velikata and uh, Father Crespi in his diary writes that the first night they, uh, they met a, which shocked all the fathers, the Indian men were totally naked. And that bothered them. <laughs> and the women were clothed, and so and the, and the, the girls were clothed, but the males were all naked. And, and then they, uh, Father Sarah later on, on the second group of men, uh, he writes that he finds a valley somewhere between uh, the Colorado and San, San Diego, he finds a valley that's full of rose bushes and roses in bloom. So, and so intense or together that you couldn't even walk into the valley. It was totally with roses. And uh, so the first division goes all the way up to uh, the Colorado River, turns west and goes directly to San Diego. The second division uh, leaves about a month later. And the, and the reason for this is that if the first division is wiped out by the Indians, maybe the second one would make it. In the meantime, we have two ships that have acquired, they're now in on Baja, they've acquired all the uh, the goods and what they needed to transfer uh, loaded onto the boats. And they took off before the army walking and on horseback. Uh, San Carlos goes all the way to San Diego and it hits a storm and is blown for north as far as the state of Washington. <laughs> and it takes time for them to come back <laughs> come back to uh, really not funny at all you'll find out <laughs> and by the time they turn around and come back the San Antonio left several weeks later but got there before the Santa uh, the uh, other ship and uh, by the time the San Carlos gets back to uh, San Diego, 90% of the men have scurvy. And a lot of, several of them are buried at sea. When they get to San Diego, over 50 of them are buried in the sands of San Diego. Uh, so then the first division, which was, uh, Crespi writes in his journal that they're a day and a half out of San Diego, and they see the barks of these ships, which means the top of the sail and so forth. They could see it a, a, a day, a day ahead, ahead of them. And uh, so when they get into into uh, San Diego, the first division, they find this chaos going on of burying the dead and trying to help those who have this terrible disease. And they're working very hard. And at the same time, there's a group of Indians that live in the San Diego area that are the most hostile of all the Indians that they meet. Uh, they're out and they're swimming out to the boat or whatever and stealing sails and whatever else they can steal. They had one fight with, uh, uh, with one of the missionaries and shot him with an arrow in the arm and he later died from that wound. Father Sarah, 
charge of that whole area there would not let on that he died so that the Indians would know. And that's the only real big skirmish they had with the Indians. Um, I have a list of all of all the Indian tribes that they encountered. Um, the Elones and there's one called almost San Diegans. Um, so now uh, uh, the second division, which has Portola and uh, Balistera, they arrive and they're just, uh, they help with all this, with the sick. They take some of the sails and make tents out of them and put the people who have scurvy in there. And once uh, Portola gets there, he's in charge of everything. He's the commander-in-chief of this entire expedition. Um, so his, what they really wanted the Spanish government, et cetera, was the ports of San Diego and the ports of Monterey. Um, so he gets everything organized and <coughs> takes men from both divisions, Padres, and a, a man by the name of Constanzo, who was uh, taken personally out of another uh, unit, <coughs> Uh, because of his expertise in, uh, as an uh, engineer and also a cartographer. He made maps, etc. He's the one who uh, drew uh, the, uh, the uh, plan for the Presidio in San Francisco and also in Monterey. Very bright man, and he kept the two best diaries that were written by the five diarists are Father Crespi and Constanzo. Uh, there was a man in Spain who wrote a marvelous biography of, of Portola, but he used Constanzo's diary in there instead of, uh, Portola wrote a diary and it was the, uh, the official report, but it doesn't compare to the other two. Um, so they take off from San Diego and they go north um, they have with them over 200 mules. Uh, they have like 40 men on horseback. They have uh, uh, well, Father Sarah stays in San Diego with a couple of priests and uh, uh, some army men uh, start to build what they call a, uh, a mission. It was so flimsy that when they came back to get him, why that was anyway. So he stayed back, but the rest of them took off for Monterey. Um, they uh, they came up the coast, uh, from San Diego, and in about Crespi says in his journal that he named an area called. Capistrano. Mm -hmm. And and when they came to what was now Los Angeles, there was nothing there, of course, but it was so burdened with uh, uh, grape, grapevines and fruit and trees and river that they said someday there will be a town there. <laughs> and they also found the La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> and it would say, Portola wrote, uh, this will be good for the where they later built houses to the pitch. And as they came up, when they got to uh, near Santa Ana, uh, there was a tremendous earthquake. <laughs> they got to know California pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, they all wrote about the earthquake. And then they um, came up the coast and a big area for Indians were Santa Barbara. And from, from that point on going north, the Indians were so friendly, so wants to be friends, they even say, come, come stay here and live with us. 
We'll fish together. We'll hunt.